Well, I think that the, the, the question with video games as, uh, as a narrative storytelling medium, you know, can be tricky and it can be a perfect thing for the right game designer slash storyteller. But it's gotta be someone who appreciates and, and is facile with both a kind of linear story and someone who embraces free will and the gamer's ability to play and experience and make his or her decisions moment to moment. And that's an artist who can take both of those things and create a kind of Venn diagram of left and right side of the brain. It's so classic Hideo. Like it is uh, the kind of genre that, that's such a specific emotional design, musical, you know, kind of uh, uniqueness. There's a special quality that, that you just sort of feel in his art. Uh, I know it's a lot of people doing a lot of work, but it's really, you can see Hideo Kojima's like, you know, fingerprint uh, on this. It's obviously got aspects of what, you know, might be familiar in some ways, but there are clearly things that are completely new and unfamiliar in others. And again, it's, it's, it's what, you know, when you think of a, of a game by Hideo, you, you're expecting something that pushes the boundaries and makes something that you haven't seen before. And that seems to be what he's done once again. Here's the thing. Any artist becomes uh, known for their work uh, because they've taken chances and they've done things that haven't just been done again and again and again and again. And then once you have sort of made a name for yourself and you've had some success, the danger is in becoming aware of that success and realizing, you know, oh, or thinking that's the thing that got me, made me successful, that thing, I should do that. And then you're as, as likely as, as anyone to just try and copy your own work. And I think that to me, the, the people who I really respect on an ongoing basis, who are creators, are people who don't really listen to that, who stay humble, who stay curious, who are still afraid of not doing the right thing, who aren't so overly confident, they become somehow disconnected from real people, who are still asking all the questions and pushing the boundaries and trying to do something that doesn't have to be wholly unfamiliar. It could still be in a form that we know, it could still be in even a world that we know, but to then, even in that world, push the boundaries, be unexpected, do things, that are challenging, not just to the game community, the movie going community, but to yourself, where you feel afraid of what you're doing. Where you're like, this is, I'm not sure we can pull this off, but I'm gonna go for it. As soon as you're doing, doing something and you're feeling safe, it's probably not worth doing. The dream though, is that the storyteller, the, the game designer, uh, the filmmaker, that, that they actually have a secret, more important thing that they're also doing that there's actually another layer, another, another reason for the thing to exist, another message that they're trying to express. And when something is made great with that intention, I think it resonates. And it has a power that's, that's greater than just the thing that you think it is. Some people just won't, they'll just play it because they want the thing that they think it is. But there's, through osmosis, there's a feeling, there's a, there's a resonance, there's, a, there's something about, like a vibration in it that, that tells you it's, it's a bit more important. But if there's, if there's a, an intention that goes deeper in the creation, it's felt in the playing. The idea that you can combine both, and he's done this before and is clearly doing it again, telling a great story and doing it in a, an interactive you know, medium, it's a tightrope, it's a very challenging thing. But if there is a master of the form, of, of taking what is the fun of a game, but the satisfaction of, an, of, of a narrative story. You know, combine those together into one piece that, that masters in every game.